Hi everyone, I'm Jay Patton. Thank you so much for joining us today on This is the Day. And Father Reed, today we talk about evangelization. Yes, our guest is Michael James Meddy, and uh, he's a great singer, Jay. He's a speaker for young people, an evangelist based in Missouri. He's going to be calling us from what I like to call the best yeah. coast. And also today is a great day for us in the church. It's the Feast of the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, nine months to Christmas. Kevin, what will we hear about in the news today? Today, a book of transcripts has been released of the late great Pope John Paul II's flying press conferences. Also, the Bishop of Tripoli, Livy, calls for the bombing to end and mediation to begin. And an interesting survey out on Catholics' opinion on same-sex marriage. All those stories ahead in the news. Jay? All that and much more right now on This is the Day. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today on This is the Day. I'm joined by my wonderful friends, Kevin Nelson and Father Reed. How are you doing? Doing well. This is an exciting day because uh, it is the Feast of the Annunciation, as I mentioned. And uh, Father Walter Carrero, Father Cristiano, we're here from St. Anthony's Parish in Cambridge with a wonderful group of people. Uh, some of the Portuguese community, celebrating the great Feast of the Annunciation when Mary said, let it be done to me as you say. She gave herself completely over, Jay, to God's will. And that's a project that we all have in our lives. Yeah, I notice you have a little something there, too. Yeah, they here. gave me this. You know what this is? I have one for you, actually. Oh. Uh, well. In honor of the Annunciation, you know, today we think about uh, how important it is, a teaching for us that that life begins a conception in the womb. Jesus, whose conception we celebrate today, really reminds us that we have to always respect human life. And this is in honor of all uh, the boys and the girls who have lost their lives because of the sin of abortion, to remember them. And uh, that's why I'm wearing that today. So that's for you. You know what's uh, interesting is this morning when I saw Father Reed, he said to me, this is a great day day today. It this is. is a great day. And of course, being the, the cynic that I am, I said, why? Why is it great? Well, right and in the middle of Lent, yeah. this great celebration, even at Mass, you know, you sing the Gloria and we say the Creed. It's kind of a pause in the middle of Lent uh, to remember that our God came among us. So does that change any of the rules of Lent at all for me? Or? Well, they, they, some say that you don't have to abstain from me today, but I'm not, to, I'm not so sure that's okay. correct. Yeah. Some say. That's always, some the, say. That's I'm always gonna, a caveat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to abstain from me today anyways, just in case. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Plus, I love fish, so for me it actually works out really go. well. Hey, you know what? We have our prayer box here, and I got an interesting uh, letter that was sent in, and it's about Tony Kenny, our good friend from the Irish oh, show. Oh, Tony, sure. Not yeah. feeling well. Okay. So? Put him right in there, Jay. Tony's going to, since I can't fit him up front because it's too crowded now, I'm going to put Tony right in here so he's right inside. You know who else we should put in there, oh. even though we don't have a letter? Uh, the people of Japan. Because oh, yeah. the, uh, the nuclear crisis there at the Fukushima nu nuclear reactor is, I guess, getting worse again, and people being uh, encouraged to evacuate uh, a wider path of um, land there in Japan. So we've got to remember the, the people of Japan in our prayers as they try to rebuild and get out of this crisis, especially the nuclear crisis that they face. Well, you just got a letter today. From, uh, you were just telling me before the show, yep. from a, a woman whose son and daughter-in-law are missing over in Japan. Yep. And, they, and, and just the, the numbers just keep rising of people who they have finding who have died and, and 17,000 are still missing that they yep. know of. And I think it's probably beyond hope. I hate to say that for right. many of the people that are trapped. So uh, we keep the people of Japan in our prayers and in our prayer box for sure. Mm -hmm. As we do you. Well, I have a, an exciting weekend coming up, by the way. Oh, what's going on? Amelia is in her first real play this weekend. Really? Yeah, she's what's in the Aladdin. And, and what is her part? Well, uh, you know, <laughs> we're not quite sure. It's not a major role, let's okay. say. She is a, a merchant in a town. She does have a line. Uh, one line she okay. has, and otherwise, uh, and my wife Shirley has been working very busy behind the scenes with a great group over there who are putting together scenery and painting and so oh, on and so forth. Yeah, uh, she would be good for that. Yeah, yeah. well, there's a, a person, Jen, who, who is really coordinating that, and Mrs. Featherstone, 
is the director of the play. I see. And the kids are having a blast. So You know, speaking of good. scenery and all, and your wife, a lot of people don't realize this, but when you watch the, the television mass, if you look very closely at the back wall of the chapel, that is a Shirley Fadden masterpiece. <laughs> and original? called Faux? Faux Finishing. Faux Finishing. Yeah. F-A-U-X. It's a little bit different. Well, we have some great letters here, as always. And, and I mean, they are. These are they wonderful really are. emails and letters. And you have the first one. Tim Stonecipher was telling me this morning he does the graphics that you see when the letters come up. He said they are great letters. And the first one comes from Ron. It's actually an email through the website, catholictv.com. He says, I'm not presently Catholic. But I really appreciate the informational coverage you have for someone like me who is considering becoming a Catholic. Thank you, and I appreciate all your programming, especially with the availability of my portable devices to take it with me wherever I go. I look forward to discovering more about the Catholic faith, and I look forward to becoming a Catholic soon. Well, Ron, that is so great to hear because we consider ourselves to be evangelical in a very strong way here at Catholic TV. And we're glad that the information we provide is helping you to make that decision. What is God's will for you? Maybe to become a Catholic. Can I tell you too? We both should be considered nerds if people only knew. This morning, <laughs> Father and I, he is across the table from me and he has his device, I have mine, and we're on the Catholic TV magazine app, just yep. going through the app. Yep. So we are now, I guess, computer nerds, even though I know nothing about computers. We're iPad but, nerds. Yeah, I know how to get to my apps. Yeah. And we were both on the apps looking at the i got to show latest. people that later. Can I show you that later? Yeah, that's, later. That's Hold nice. on. Don't this leave. is a letter, or, uh, and it is, and I can't, I can't read the name, but I'm going to say it's Janice. There you go. It is Janice. You brighten up each and every day, even when I'm at my lowest. There are always lots of laughs, smiles, even some tears, but all of it is wonderful. Thank you. And that's from Janice. Well, thank you, Jess, for writing in. You put a smile on our face anytime we get a letter or we get something, uh, an email. Always have a smile. So thanks. Glad you enjoy the program. And Teresa writes, uh, she ends her letter by saying, Ci vediamo a Roma. But Good for her. She also writes, as I started to write to you, I saw Going My Way on Catholic TV with the guest being Father Reed. Huh. I sang along <laughs> with all of you, and it certainly was enjoyable. The first thing I do each day is to watch the Mass and the Rosary on Tuesdays and Fridays. I watch This Is the Day with Kevin Nelson uh, and Father Reed and Jay. I hope this note finds you healthy and happy. It does, Teresa, and thanks for letting us know. Wow. See, that's a good letter. I like the end, though, that's because I told you. Chividiamo. You should, you should end every program like that. Chividiamo presto. Presto. See you soon. Uh, this is from Elizabeth. I have recently begun watching video of the Mass each day on Catholic TV uh, after being given an iMissile app for use on my iPad. The iPad, that seems to be the thing today. As a woman with MS, I am often homebound. I truly appreciate the opportunity you give me on Catholic TV to participate in the Daily Mass. Well, Elizabeth, thank you very much. And what I'm going to do, Elizabeth is since, you know, you are homebound a lot, I'm going to put you right in the prayer box. You're going in the prayer box. Put it in Boom. there. Elizabeth, people are going to say prayers for you. What do you have there? This is actually the uh, iPad app, iCatholic, and that's our magazine coming out for the month of April. A little sneak peek. We'll talk more about that later, though. 60 pages. Well, if you'd like to write us, it's real easy to do. Please write us at Catholic TV, 34 Chestnut Street, Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Or you can me email us at this is the day at catholictv.com. And we always love to get your emails and your letters. Truly. Bright as they, Truly we do. As they had said, as Janice said, it has brightens our day. So good to hear from you. Joining us now is Michael Matti. Michael, how are you? I am well. Great. You are well. Hey, listen, first of all, we have to really thank you because we know that you're calling us from the West Coast and it is only in the early morning hours. But the one we really should thank, I guess, is your wife who's home with the five children who are not feeling well, right? Yeah, that's correct. She's, uh, she really um, embraces the sacrament of marriage and realizes that it's a sacrifice and um, uh, realizes the unique gifts that I have. And she, she makes so many sacrifices so that I can... Um, so that I can go out on the road and, and share, you know, music and, and the gospel to a lot of different people. Well, tell us about your work as a musician and a speaker. Sure. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Catholic musician and speaker from St. Louis, Missouri, and um, I do uh, evening concerts for parishes or for youth groups. I do uh, day-long retreats for, uh, for, like, confirmation prep sometimes we do that, or, like, youth rallies 
or music at, at conferences and that. And I try to use music as a method, um, really, really like a way to, to kind of build a relationship with people and then introduce them to Christ. Like, my, you know, my passion is, is using music, especially with young people, because music is so, so vital to, um, to young people's lives. So using mu- music that would really speak to them and then, um, and then, you know, giving them the gospel message within that, like in between songs or like maybe with an extended kind of, you know, kind of talk section in that. You know, Michael, this is Father Reed. Jay and I were talking the other day about the music that influenced us as young people. And you speak about catechizing what I'm going to call the guitar hero generation. Can you share with us how they're receiving the good news? Sure. Well, it's, it's a real challenge to, to break through the kind of noise threshold because there's so much, uh, there's so much media out there and there's so much music in that. And uh, I know in my, my own personal you know, faith walk, I listen to a lot of garbage music for for a long time, and it got me thinking a lot of garbage thoughts, and it got me in, into garbage habits. And so um, I try to, to do music that's, you know, pointing toward Christ. Um, and I know I've seen in my own life, when I listen to good music, when I listen to, to God-centered music, it helps me to to, um, to build virtue, you know, to, to have good habits. And so, you know, we try to, we spare no expense with the production and and all of the different things that, that are going to make it stand up against the stuff that they're going to hear, you know, anywhere else. Um, and, and it's really a, a challenge because, the, you know, the, the modern generation of young people, they're, they're not coming from a Catholic, you know, background, or they're not culturally Catholic. They, like they're coming from a, from a, a, a totally secular worldview and, and sometimes, you know, militant atheist worldview. And, and so it's, it, can be, uh, it can be a challenge unlike other generations of, of spreading the good news. You have featured in the 2011 NCYC theme song, Call to Glory, which will be in Indianapolis. How important are these large gatherings for teens? Well, I think they're very important because I know I, I came from a smaller town, and, and I never had a, a really a big church-type experience mm-hmm. like, you know, World Youth Day or, or like NCYC or some of these other larger, you know, youth gatherings. I just came from the Religious Education Congress in Los Angeles, and it's you know, some of these are huge, huge gatherings, and it's a really beautiful thing when the church can come together in that kind of um, in that kind of way. Because I think that people can really see, oh wow, I'm not alone. I'm not I'm not isolated. There are other people that 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 are that are asking the same questions that I am, and that are walking toward the Lord. And and there's inspiration that comes from that. I mean, that's that's why um, you know that's why God Jesus gave us the church, His bride, so that we could stay strong as a community and press on toward the goal. Now, Michael, I, Father Reed, I, I promised you, and I'm going to fulfill that promise. I'm going to pray for your wife and your kids, because, as Jay <laughs> mentioned, the children are not feeling too well, and they are great children, I'm sure. Where can people learn more about you? And uh, also, <laughs> a song about how to pronounce your name, because even I had to ask you before the show exactly how to pronounce it. Yeah, I, I have my website that has um, lots of different stuff on it. And it actually has um, lots of free stuff. I like to give give uh, songs away and give uh, other different items away. And it's www.michaeljamesmeddy.com. Michael James, and the last name is spelled M-E-T-T-E dot com. And I actually wrote a, a kind of a funny little jingle about my name that um, helps people to remember. It gives them a little bit of background about me, and that's, that's on the website also. Michael, we're thrilled that you joined us today. We hope the weather's good out there. and. California and that things are going well at home for your wife and your uh, five beautiful children. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. You know, I love that when you hear a young guy like Michael who is just doing such great work and reaching and evangelizing people out there. Yeah, and, and his music is great. I was at the website uh, earlier today. And of course you were. Hoping to hear uh, more of him at uh, and, and, and I can, oh, I can have a second. NCYC. Kind of, NCYC this mm-hmm. year in Indianapolis. Yeah. Are we going to be there, buddy? Of course we're going to be there. Of course there. we're going to be there. And we're going to see our, our wonderful friend, our good old friend, ah. Bishop Christopher Coyne, new auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of Indy. Kevin, how are you doing over there? Doing all right, Jay. Father, how are you doing? Hey, Kevin. Now, did you have Bishop Coyne in a class? Yes. Yeah, you I did. Guess. You were in the same class with me, weren't you? I believe I was, yes. <laughs> You might not remember me, but I was uh, there. Oh no, you're he very, was that tall guy, you know. You're very memorable. How how did you do in the class? Um, I'm sure. Um, I don't know. I did good, I think. <laughs> Kevin, what's going on around the world in the Catholic faith? 
probably got an A, but you know, I didn't want to brag. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jane, Father. Hello, everyone. It is time to take a look at the news. We begin from the Vatican. During his 104 trips outside of Italy, Pope John Paul II held flying press conferences. Retired Cardinal Roberto Tucci, who organized most of these trips, said those conferences show the Pope's great ability to face the great questions of the day without fear. He said the Pope was not evasive and never afraid to answer a question, even if he was irritated by it. The Cardinal made his remarks at a recent presentation of a book of transcripts in Italian of many of the late Pope's flying press conferences. The transcripts come from archived, rec archived recordings of Vatican Radio. Cardinal Tucci said the speeches, books, and poetry of Pope John Paul give people what he thought when he had time to reflect in a methodical way, but his responses to reporters, which include some lighthearted joking and some good-natured scolding, show more of his personality, his ability to think on his feet, and his real skill with languages, since he would respond in the language in which the question was posed. Jesuit Father Federico Lombardi, director of Vatican Radio in the Vatican Press Office, said 70% of Vatican Radio's entire sound archive consists of the voice of Pope John Paul. This is not only because his was the longest reign of any pope in Vatican Radio's 80-year history, but also because he was the pope who spoke the most. In other news from the Vatican, during his weekly general audience at the Vatican, Pope Benedict XVI stressed the need for world peace and for peacemakers. He also continued a series of talks about the doctors of the church, focusing on St. Lawrence of Brindisi, an Italian, an Italian capuchin. Rome Reports has more on this week's audience. It feels like spring has finally arrived as people crowded St. Peter's Square for the first general audience to be held outside in 2011. Benedict XVI dedicated his catechesis to St. Lawrence of Brindisi, a Capuchin friar who lived during the 16th and early 17th centuries. The Pope commended the friar for his work ethic and commitment to spreading the gospel, something he said that everyone could learn from. The new evangelization needs well-prepared zealous and courageous apostles like St. Lawrence so that the light and beauty of the gospel may reach into the depths of every human heart. St. Lawrence established Capuchin monasteries throughout what is modern-day Germany and Austria. His work helped to bring many Protestants back to the Catholic faith and spread peace throughout Europe. The son of the Franciscan tradition also applied himself heroically to efforts towards peace and reconciliation between the nations and peoples of Europe. His witness serves as an excellent example for our age, so fraught with violence, ethical relativism, and religious indifference. St. Lawrence was beatified by Pope Pius VI in 1783 and canonized almost a century later in 1881 by Pope Leo XIII. Looking now at news from around the world, almost a week of nightly bombings is enough, says the Apostolic Vicar of Tripoli, Libya. Bishop Giovanni Martinelli says it's time for the African Union to try to mediate an end to the violence, and he trusts African wisdom to resolve the crisis. The bishop criticized the Europeans using bombs as a way to end the violence. U.S., British, and French military began airstrikes March 19th. The strikes are meant to weaken leader Muammar Gaddafi's military forces and their ability to retaliate against pro-democracy activists and innocent civilians. The U.S. government says European and NATO forces will take control of the operation. Bishop Martinelli voiced his concern for the situation of the African refugees from other countries who continue to knock on their doors, hoping that the church can help them get to Europe. The bishop said the only thing the church can do is encourage them to go to Tunisia, where international organizations are on hand to help refugees. And finally in the news uh, from around the country, according to one report, American Catholics are more tolerant than Americans in general and members of other Christian denominations on issues concerning homosexuals and same-sex couples. That's according to a March study by the Washington-based Public Religion Research Institute. The study found that Catholics are more accepting of same-sex marriage, especially when civil unions are offered as an option. Stephen Chenick, who is chairman of the politics department at the Catholic University of America and director of the university's Institute for Policy Research and Catholic Studies, 
said Catholics are less conservative than the American public overall. Shinnick added that he is opposed to same-sex marriage. The study did show that church attendance was a factor in the survey. Only 26% of Catholics who attend church weekly or more, or more support same-sex marriage, compared with 43% of those who attend once or twice a month and 59% of Catholics who attend a few times a year or less. About 3,000 Americans were included in the survey. 600 of those were Catholic. The Catholic Church teaches that the dignity of homosexual individuals must be respected, as well as their rights as people, such as the right to employment and freedom from unjust discrimination. But the Church upholds the sanctity of traditional marriage as being only between one man and one woman. Well, that is all the information we have for you on this Friday, March 25, 2011. We go back over to Jay and Father Reed with more of This is the Day. Kevin, as usual, A+. Plus. I don't know what you got in Bishop Coyne's class, but you're going to get an A plus with, for us. How's that? <laughs> well, thank you. Well, maybe an A because no one's perfect. So we're going to, you're, now you've oh, just been give, No, no, he's an A. Give the guy a break. Now he's down to an A all of a sudden. Hey, Kevin, now this is going to be called what we call a tease. We're going to quiz you when you get back. We've got some questions for you. Wow. Just for you when, you, when we come back from this if break. I'm, if I'm watching at home, I'm staying put. <laughs> That's what I'm. We'll be right back more of This is a Day right after this. Most of you won't recognize me or my real name. It's Norma McCourty. I'm also known as Jane Roe, the plaintiff in the Supreme Court case, Roe versus Wade, which legalized abortion in America and changed our nation in an unprecedented way. Back in 1973, I was a very confused 21-year-old with one child and facing an unplanned pregnancy. At the time, I fought to obtain a legal abortion, but the truth be told, I have three daughters and have never had an abortion. However, upon knowing God, I realized that my case, which legalized abortion on demand, was the biggest mistake of my life. You see, abortion has eliminated 50 million innocent babies in the U.S. alone since 1973. Abortion scars an untold number of post-abortive mothers, fathers, and families, too. You read about me in history books, but now I'm dedicated to spreading the truth about preserving the dignity of all human life, from natural conception to natural death. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other institution. We developed the scientific method and founded the college system. We defend the dignity of human life and uphold marriage. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church, with over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith. Jesus started our church when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So if you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look Visit catholicscomehome.org today. We are Catholic. Welcome home. <laughs> uh, we, are, we are back. I'm not sure we want to be back. Father Reed's giving us a countdown of self Lift off! We have Adam giving us a countdown, but no, Father's going to give us a countdown too. Kevin... Okay, so we've got some questions for you. All right. You ready? Okay. You know, right before we came on, you said, I don't know if I'm going to like this. <laughs> you are going to like this. Right. We want to ask about Clear Voice. Well, what's going on with Clear Voice? Well, Clear Voice is um, a great show. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm not going to like this. You're going to give me a little more than that? Is that because well, you're the producer? <laughs> <laughs> executive. No, it's, it, it's executive a, producer. Way, as, you know, Father Reed's holding up a magazine now. And, uh, well, you know, Jay, I don't want to give too much away because I want people to read the magazine the april monthly uh, it tells all about clear voice the beginnings the uh the future and what's going on now but it's a great show uh, what is it though what is the show uh, well christine caswell and uh, john monahan host it and uh, it's a little bit of a news magazine show we have uh, stories from uh, the vatican from around the world we also have people uh, that are you know leading catholic initiatives around the country as well we drop by for interviews uh, we have uh, actually have film reviews. We have uh, a commentary by uh, somebody that's uh, familiar here. This is the day, Matt Weber. He's mm -hmm. our resident uh, commentator. 
and uh, it's just a little bit of a, a little bit of everything, a little potpourri, and we hope uh, people are enjoying it. It's been going on for about two months now. And you wrote the cover story this month too, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Hopefully, it's the whole story of Clear Voice. Yeah, behind the scenes, everything. Where yeah. it came from, how it came to be. Well, the, li the little story that we had about the uh, title. That was always a, that was a big story too. A that little, was the hardest yeah, part the of the whole show <laughs> was coming up with the title, but it worked out, and it's a great title. And it's trademark too. Yes, TM. Hey, but he, you know what though? The thing about it is that uh, there's a lot of work. You put a lot of work into the program. I, I think everyone who watches it realizes that it, it needs a, uh, work in in terms of behind the scenes. But it's a team effort too, right? Oh, I mean, I know Richard yeah, yeah. does the editing, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, Richard. Uh, actually, yesterday we were in there going over the show. Uh, Richard puts all the pieces together, uh, and it, and it's a lot of pieces to put together. So. Um, you know, we, we uh, have so many segments and so many different things going on that uh, it, it's a little bit of an editing job every week. So, and then once you finish, you start looking the next week. You know, well, so. it's all about Richard, by the way, because <laughs> Richard com came into my office this morning and he said, "Did you watch Clear Voice last night? Did you watch it? Did you watch Clear Voice?" He said last that night? to me too. Yeah, yeah. did he? Yeah. It's all about Richard. Yeah. yeah. He, because, but because of course he does a nice job. Now, what do you? Oh, the eye. Well, oh, the you iPad. get the magazine where you can read all about Clear Voice. This is our monthly magazine, which will send it out to you for free. If you want it, you don't get it. There'll be an address at the end of the show today. But also, if you have an iPad or an iPhone, you can download the free app. It's called iCatholic in the iTunes Store, and you can actually read the magazine online. I have it right here on my iPad. Very, very cool. Uh, but the show can be seen, if you have Catholic TV in your area, it can be seen on Thursday nights at 8 o'clock, prime time, or actually on Fridays at 11.30. But you can watch it at our website, catholictv.com slash clearvoice at any time. And the new show is up there right now for you to watch, catholictv.com slash clearvoice. Yeah, I just want to say something, too. We were out, and, and to give a little tease for people, but we were out at Blessed John the 23rd Seminary this past uh, week, and we're going to be there a couple more times, and we're putting together a nice series uh, on late vocations. So uh, people might want to be looking for that in the future, maybe in you know, late April, early May. So uh, stay Sounds tuned Sounds like for you're that. on tour. <laughs> we, uh, you know, we're going to be out at Pope John. I get it. and it's going to be great. Uh, you know, just from the interviews we did the other day, uh, it's just really interesting, These um, the late vocations. We talked to a guy yesterday from uh, Texas who uh, is a uh, father, grandfather. Unfortunately, his wife passed away, but he's, he's in the seminary now. And uh, just interesting stories of, of faith. So I'm running out of time. So go No, well, it isn't that. It's, it's, it's supposed to be a tease, and you're giving away the whole program. Pretty soon you're going to go through a list going. of everyone going. You got me going on. now. Hey, Kevin, well, thanks. It's a great show. And as you and I were talking about in Father the other day, thanks for all the work you put into it. And uh, John thank and Christine, you. too. Yeah, that was, yeah, um, we'd yeah. like to thank you. Hey, a special... Good luck to the men's conference that's going to be in Worcester, Massachusetts this weekend. We, they've been on as guests of This Is The Day Before. They do a great job. Remember our prayer box and all of those people in Japan who are suffering now. And know that all of you are in our thoughts and in our prayers. And on this day that the Blessed Virgin Mary said yes to God's request that she would become the mother of God. Let it be done to me as you have said. And with that, the angel left her. May the angels remain with you this day and help you to know and to do God's will in your life. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you all today and throughout this weekend. Thanks for joining us here on This Is The Day. We love coming into your living room, and we're glad that you came into ours. God bless you.